We've just checked on the previous episode how to fix an ENB and how to stabilize it and properly install it. In this episode, and we will try and fix furthermore the stability of the game and also add a bunch of other gameplay modes. If you like those videos again, drop a like, subscribe, leave a comment, it helps a lot, makes it easier for YouTube to recommend me. And that being said, let's jump straight into modding Skyrim Special Edition. So the very first mod you need is clean Skyrim. Always this bad thing going on with Bethesda games. When it comes to Bethesda games, their textures are absolutely horrendous. And if you check Fallout 4, this game to this day cannot run properly because of its vanilla textures. And Skyrim, it's actually very similar. Even with all of the mods we installed like Static Mesh Improvement, Noble Skyrim, and all of those different type of mods, we still have issues with the vanilla textures. Look at here, gentlemen. Clean Skyrim textures special edition. This pretty much scrubs literally, I would say 90% of the textures in the game and completely cleans them. And you want to grab this one right here, which is a new one, because we did use the downgrade edition patch. And you also want to grab the optional file here. The next mod we want to grab is EFPS Exterior FPS Boost. They pretty much self-explanatory. We're going to grab EFPS Anniversary Edition to pretty much fix the FPS issues if you're using Anniversary Edition content. And here you have a version for instance, you, if you haven't bought the Anniversary Edition and just have the four free contests for Creation Club, so you can get that instead. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one right here. The next one we're going to grab is the less vanilla trees and <gasps> Kavu, not the less vanilla trees, we need trees in Skyrim, we need to make Skyrim like the Witcher game and that is something I used to do, however there is a file for this mod and you can see this is 100% of the trees, this is 33% of the trees and this is 50% so we're gonna go for the 33% of less trees and you might say this looks really mediocre but trust me when you every single tree has LVT textures, it has shadows, it has the graphics, maybe you're using custom textures in here and there and there is no reason to have so many trees hanging around doing absolutely nothing. This mod fixes that, so go ahead and grab this one as well. And the next mod you want to grab for saving FPS is Recursion Monitor right here. Just go ahead, click on that and pretty much install the recursion fix. Lastly, let's go and grab Skyrim Priority Special Edition. Uh, if you ever encounter micro starter when it comes to combat or when you check your inventory and some things like that, there is a weird priority issue happening with Anniversary Edition and Skyrim Special Edition and this pretty much fixes that. And you want to go and grab the Skyrim Priority right here. Install that and it's going to fix again some micro FPS issues you have here and there. And next important mod is we're doing this, go and grab the spread, draw and sit fixes. Uh, you know exactly what this does, if you don't know there is this weird bug in Skyrim that it's actually horrible to play with. That every time you spread and you draw and set your weapon, your movement speed kinda doesn't change and it's very weird and we actually finally have got a solution for that. Thanks to Plakinta, however you pronounce that, so we're gonna go and grab this one as well. And again, some small things we're going to grab here and there. Go and grab Vigilant, CBB, 3BA Body Slide, which is going to convert all of the armors into the 3BA Body Slide, the body mod that we are using. Next, you're going to grab the Vigilant Armor and Weapon Retextures uh, from this amazing mod author. And go ahead and grab them in the mid resolution 2K and 1K. You never want to go for 4K textures because they're going essentially break your game. And also grab the Vigilant Molag Ball Dragon Retexture. It's a cute little mod. Let's grab this here so we don't have to grab this later. Also go and grab the immersive weapon patches. So we're going to grab the AI overhaul that we are using and also grab the main file and the additional file of the AI overhaul. The next thing we're going to do, we will go and try and enhance most of the interiors, so at least the ones I can think of, and that's gonna take quite a while. We will go in and get all of the GK Skyrim interior files, except do not get GK Skyrim, do not get uh, the Riverwood one, do not get Deadly Shadows. Only grab the ones that enhances specific locations because we don't want to lose too much fps and you're going to lose way too much fps if you install gk skyrim go for gk's profile here that's how you want to do it go to user files click skyrim special edition go to endorsements and 
Aside from GK Sky, GK White Run, do not get any of the mods that change uh, cities, if that makes sense. Get only mods like this one. We've got the banner made in a previous episode, if I remember correctly. Get only the mods, for instance, that uh, change interiors of locations like GK Dragon Treats, GK Arcadia, GK Dragon Huntsman, GK Swarm Maiden. Get all of those. Grab every single one of those, they will make your game look amazing. Do not grab any mod that changes a whole city because it's going to cost you again so much FPS and trust me, once you're going to have 200, maybe, in this, maybe after this episode 400 mods, 500 mods, 1000 mods, when you have a big overhaul of a city like that, it is going to cause problems to your game. It is not worth it. The game is going to look fresh enough already with the different GK stuff and all the things you're going to add here and there of the small things. Do not grab any of those really big overhaul mods. I know it's very tempting, but don't do it. So I'm going to skip this process. What you want to do is you want to make sure, don't go and download all of them at once. Download them one by one. What I'm going to do, for instance, we've downloaded the GK Bannered Mare. Let's download the uh, Dragon's Ridge. You're gonna go here, and you're going to click here and download Dragon's Ridge. I'm gonna wait for the download to finish. And as you can see, this is my queue, because we have all of those big mods installed. I'm gonna check my queue, and it went to 14, and that means it's on the queue and it's going to get installed. I'm going to close this. I will go back and I will move to the next mod, GK Arcadia, and I'm going to do this process for literally every single GK mod, aside from GK Rugged Flagon, aside from the GK Skyrim Big City mods. So I'm going to see you very soon. And also two more mods to get, it's two presets for smooth cam, uh, pretty nice ones, just grab and install both of those. The first one is smooth cam, Valina Enhanced 2. And the second one is Smooth Cam Galuna's preset, so get that one too. Also an amazing mod to get, Skyrim Shit Engine. It's an engine that helps you to buy breath of a keybind to pretty much as you can see select. Find specific mods, add perk points and kinda spawn everything you like. Even go through your whole mod files and kinda spawn everything. It gives you the power to be a god and I just love this mod so much. Go also and grab some of the small patches here and there. Dwemer Ballista crash fix. There is a very weird crash happening when multiple ballistas are having collision with each other. Which it will very rarely happen but you never know. If you actually step on one of those and start hurting left and right. It's a known issue that it will break your game. And also grab the second file. Get the creature collision fix as well for a bunch of different creature modes. It's also got a nice update, so grab that, grab that one too. Also grab uh, this mod right here, which fixes the clock spells causing some issues with your game. It's kinda again hard to explain, so it's easier for you to just grab and get it and never have to deal with any crashes, including at least magic and clock spells that you will encounter in Skyrim. Another random mod that improves the summoning when it comes to Skyrim, but you can summon anything you want from all of your different and various magic mods and you can actually interact by telling your summon to wait here if you don't want your summon to follow you and bring your stealth or something like that. It's very small but it adds to you actually interacting with your summons versus you just not being able to do anything with those. And lastly, let's go to Mandragora's uh, channel. Those will be the last ones we'll get for this episode. And let's try to update all of the statues in Skyrim to make them look so much more badass. And they do use custom textures, however, if you install just few of those on 2000 uh, resolution, you should be fine. We very rarely install custom textures, and when we do, it's for very small mods. Uh, a small note to make. Do not grab the Daedric Shrine's Namira. I don't know why, but this mod, every time I install it, it crashes my game. Not always, just randomly. I think it's conflicting with other and starts, so this is the only one we are not going to grab. So we want to grab pretty much most of those, as you can see here. And you should be good to go. Just do not grab Namira and you should be fine. Just like in real life. For the Dibella statue, also grab the parts for GK Temple of the Bella. Grab this one too. Next, let's move to the Farmer Overhaul of, of Madragoda. First mod you're going to get is Farmer Equip Armor. It's a very immersive mod actually. When you go and loot their armors, just gone. 
Very nice, very small mod that nobody knows about. Those are a bunch of patches you can get if you want to, but we're going to grab some of those. That being said, grab this one here and, and grab this one as well. Grab the optional file of HD Falmer weapons and it adds a glow effect on most of the weapons uh, of Falmers. So grab this one and grab the third patch which kinda includes everything and lastly grab the Madragoda's Farmer Overhaul which is a patch on top of another patch and we managed to completely overhaul the farmers let's go also and grab Splashes of Storm a nice mod that adds a little bit of variations when it comes to, to weathers it works with our current playthrough and mod list and also go and grab the console, utility, uh, and the NG is pretty much the new versions coming out this one kinda works for every single version of consoles, utility, which is a mod you're going to need for other specific mods to play. So go ahead and grab this one too. And I guess why not, go ahead and grab Moon and Stars, Sky Overhaul, it's a pretty cute mod. Since we're getting some graphical mods here and there. And also grab Race Menu 0.416 Memory Leak, which is a big problem with me Race Menu that thankfully has been fixed, so it will cause you no more issues and no more crashes. Grab the creator spawn. This mod right here is going to fix a problem with creator spawning. You need that to help your game not crash as often as well. And go ahead and grab the ENB complex crash. Go to the files and go all the way down the grass mod that we're using, Folka. Folka Grr. Folka Grr. I can't pronounce that. Go ahead and grab that too. I'm gonna go without the arrow ball tweaks because I don't like it as much. Go ahead and grab Birds and Flocks of Skyrim as well and install that too. Grab for the, for the farmer equip armor, grab the one we've got here. It's just that and you should be fine. Also go for the Season of Skyrim, remove unwanted grass, which is a very nice mod. We did remove some grass, as you can see, that you don't really need when it comes to different seasons. It's going to save FPS, it's a beautiful mod overall. It makes your game look so much better. So grab this one as well. And I know this is a stability episode, however, since we're not using Skyrim immersive creatures, I did say we will get so much here and there to add gameplay, and I remain true to my word. This is Lawless, a budget overhaul. This mod came out on Nexus, I was not around when it came out, and it exploded. What it does? It grabs the bandits, the most useless, worthless enemies you will find in Skyrim and as you can see, overhauls them, gives them different armors, different weapons, spells, you will find the bandits using bound weapons or necromancers or stealth. It's actually really nice, it reminds me of the raider overhaul. And there is another overhaul we will get for bandits, but it's mostly has to do with armors really. This is an actual full overhaul. It's a mix of combat mod similar to Revenge of the Enemies and also visually changing the bandits. And that being said, I'm just gonna grab the lowest budget overhaul. You don't want to grab something that I don't really know. I haven't really tested the expanded enemy overhaul. If you have, let me know if it's safe or not. Let's also grab MFG Fix. It's both of an engine mod and it also serves other purposes with a mix of this mod and a bunch of other mods. You can have, let's say, your character blink. Go and grab the one for the version we're using. Don't go always for the main files, go and search and get the one for 1.597. Let's also grab the XP32 Skeleton Special Extended Fixed Scripts, which is a nice mod that I forgot to get in our very first episode. It fixed some of the scripts in XP32. It will change how some NPCs greet you and something I have to say about regarding this mod. It is safe as long as you are using vanilla followers or you don't add way too many custom followers. This works great with AI overhaul and everything we've got so far. First of all, we're gonna grab the main file for sure. We will also grab the, U the unofficial Skyrim patches. Uh, do not use the extensive follower fr framework. There was a specific mod that was actually destroying my game with this. As you guys know, I'm a very big fan of Vigilant. It's one of the best mods out there. And if I have to select a second mod that comes close to Vigilant, it's going to be Unslat. Unslat is very similar to Vigilant. It plays around a snow area. And I've played this mod when it was in beta, where there was no voice acting, where there was nothing. And this mod holds up. It is absolutely beautiful. It gives you a completely new area to explore. It feels Bloodborne is 
uh, it feels very mystical, it's a very nice mod. So do not grab this one because I'm not running a lot gen generation. The Unslaught Special Edition and also grab the voice, the English voice line add-on which is going to put English voice lines. And lastly, of course, go and grab the Unslaught CBB 3BA body slide which is Unslaught has some of the best uh, armor mods out there, Vigilant as well. Go and grab the body slide, we will update our body mod as well for the Vigilant patch. And also go and grab the Unslaught weapon and armor detection, just look at those. Look how better they look, left is how they used to look and right is how it looks now. They look absolutely fantastic and anything that adds more armor mods, in my opinion, is a W and we get that. Let's go and get the true directional movement boss parts which is going to add similar to Vigilant. Ignore the graphics, what it's important is that it adds boss part. Grab this one as well which puts some voice lines to some unvoiced NPCs. I don't like Glamour. I think Glamour is a beautiful mod however it feels out of place when it comes to combining that to vanilla. Onslaught feels like it fits on Skyrim similar with Vigilant because on Onslaught you're chasing dragons and dragon balls and other things I cannot really spoil if you haven't played the add-on. On Vigilant you are a servant of Talos and you are chasing Dremora and demons. So it really feels nicely into the lore. Glenmore feels kinda random in my opinion. And let's go to J Spira's mod page and let's go and grab all of the expanded uh, modes. That being said, all of the expanded quest mods. Vampire line expansion. It pretty much enhances uh, vampires, their lines, how they react, how they talk. I think vampires always feel like luster. If anything, vampires will always feel very unique in any game. Okay, let's grab the Orc add-on too, I guess. All of those are ESLs. On the next episode, we're going to work on how to turn... Go and grab the Force Hall and Thalmor line expansion. It pretty much adds the same effect, but on Thalmor and Force Hall. And of course, the Civil War line expansion too. Grab the Bandit line expansion. This only increases again the lines when they talk, the things they say when they attack you, all of those things. Grab the main file and also grab the optional file, which also fixes the dark uh, elf voices too. Go and grab the carriages and stables uh, dialogue. Similar idea. This has pretty much the same idea around it, and it's kinda complicated to install, but we'll get this together. So, get the complete version here. One of the reasons why I don't use many big city mods and, si and mods that overhaul many cities is that because mods like this don't work very well with custom mods like that. And it adds many more traveling to the game. You can pay for instance to travel to Riverwood or specific places on the Pale and things like that. It's a beautiful mod. And here you can read all of those different type of patches. Let's go and do this one by one. So go ahead and grab the hearth file extended patch. Go ahead and grab this patch right here that moves the carriage away from downstar even if you want to use a custom a city mod that will help. Get the another custom file here which adds carriages in solitude, mortal and downstar. And that's again one of the reasons why I don't like installing that many city mods or go and pretty much install everything with the main file and that should do it for the carriage overhaul. And with that out of the way, let's go also and grab from the carriage and steps dialogue bundle. Go and grab pretty much everything here, every single one of those. Let's go and enhance most of the quests we can in Skyrim Special Edition. And we have around 10 or 15 mods and that will include the episode. We will get a bunch of quest mods, enhance the vanilla, some of the vanilla quests completely. Let's go ahead and get those one by one. Let's start with the Whispering Door. Ooh, one of my most favorite quests actually. And it's installed. Let's go and get useless blankets. Have you seen NPCs sleeping for instance? Uh, they never use blankets really and this is really cool. If you're playing a stealth character you can see those, it does the immersion, you can see they're sleeping instead of sleeping with their boots on top of the bed. It's a very nice mod to have. Okay, so first of all, let's go and grab sleeping expanded animations and NPC reactions. If you go and wake up an NPC, they're going to tell you, bro, I'm sleeping here. And it adds again. 
to the immersion. So let's get sleeping expanded here. And on top of that, let's go and grab use those blankets here. And let's continue to lock chest half keys. I love this mod. You will really appreciate this mod the more you play. So just grab it. Trust me, it's a beautiful mod. It doesn't make it where it's impossible to open chests. It, it just makes it where some chests will have cleverly put keys around the dungeon that you will have to find. It helps you with exploration. Here you can see different of other mods. More to say, oh more to say it's a beautiful mod actually, let's get that. I love installing those type of mods because every time we do that I, I see what mods we are missing. So let's grab more to say, it's a very nice mod. Again, small mods like that make the difference between night and day when it comes to playing Skyrim and they cost nothing to get those, that's the best thing about it. NPCs react to necromancy, get only the main file, the optional file makes it where you have no consequences which is kinda weird. If you are someone who is summoning skeletons and dead corpses inside the white run, you should be put in jail and guards should actually chase you, I love this mod so much. Again, you will see how much these mods are adding once you play with it. Let's go College of Winterhold, Quest Expanded, a beautiful mod. Grab the optional file because it has a weird issue with quest markers and grab the main file as well. Go for the float animation fix which looks so weird when NPCs do that, it's like they're trying to eat that float. Not anymore with this mod. You will see many NPCs trying to play float. Apparently people like playing flutes in Skyrim and it looks awful every time with this mod, it's not going to look as awful. Let's go and grab immersive rejections. We're going to get NPCs where amulets of Maura. So you will see NPCs that are going to get married. They will actually have amulets of Mara around them. You can actually kill them and loot them, which is a cool thing. This is why I installed this mod. But if you are not as sinister as me, this is a nice mod to help you, I don't know, found a spouse. I know people play like that or have this extra bit of immersion. Just go for the main file here. Go for immersive rejections because you can ask someone to get married and they will say no because they don't know who you are. Cut red handed, another nice quest mod. Grab that one as well. Grab the unofficial Skyrim special edition parts and the main file. This is a bunch of choices we're using xp32 get the only cure another nice quest mode to have go for house of horrors get house of horrors too this is a new one i haven't used before it's actually nice it makes the word bribes are actually based on spellcraft, so aka the speed skill, which it's going to make you, it's going to make it harder for you to go around that in the early game. Maybe you're level 30 or 40 plus, and you have leveled up speeds, which makes sense, and you're very good at it. You will go around with things like that, but it will make the game much more challenging. Take a seat, adds a bunch of different seating animations. At which is nice, it's going to add much more dynamic seating on different NPCs instead of looking at the same two idols. Go and grab uh, this one right here which fixes some of the issues you might encounter with seating animations and things like that, just in case grab it. We have the Nelheim quest expanded as well, go and grab that. We have Headhunter. Headhunter is a beautiful mod that it works with uh, missives. You know how kings tell you to go and slay a giant for instance or go and chase a bunt or two? That pretty much expands this whole idea and it works with missives too. Let's go for the immersive interactions again with different NPCs. We're not using any of the scary mods here. Get this and if you don't use missives I will say that you should grab this one. We have immersive interactions which a beautiful mod again which when people speak, do things, run around you will see them actually using different uh, air conditional expression. It makes NPCs do what most humans can't in real life, makes them express themselves and grab only the main file which requires MFG fakes, the one I've told you before. Many mods will require this to work. And let's also grab a player's eyes blink as well. I am going after this to fix all of those, launch loot to see if there is something going wrong, then launch Nemesis to fix and update the animations and then we are going to fix the body slides. I am going to do this with you actually. You want to go into loot and sort plugins to see if there is something going wrong. We have the sorting a bit dealt with and we have some issues I think. And you will go here to the RDO USCP parts and you're going to disable that. Go inside your Skyrim data folder as I've showed you and also delete that as well. Your game needs some time to find those files and now sort the plugin and you will see that the RDO USCP patch will be gone. 
And as you can see, it is completely gone and our game looks uh, very fine now. Let's see if there is something new for us to pick, which shouldn't be, but just in case. Click Launch Nemesis to update all of the new DAR animations we've picked and some fixes with XP, XP32. Close this and lastly, go to your dashboard here and find your body slide. I've installed a different body slide that I want to see how it looks. Anything of the priest you can always come back and change that later on or even do it on race menu. Patch build. Click on all of the 3BA stuff, build it. And as you can see, it's going to ask you, do you want to install the current body on the CPB or the 3BA? Always go for 3BA, so they can actually work and have physics and everything. Click build. Something I always like to say is that do not install mods the way I do. Don't install mods like an animal, like me. Install the mods one by one, slowly. There is no hurry, really. The only reason I'm doing this is because, again, I've done it multiple times. Let's check the preset here. And the preset changes with the different values. And you can change those on the different presets. Let's go like this. Let's, let's make a dummy thick a female character. Some things I want to show you. I'm going to put this on the time lapse if you want to skip. First of all, let's go on, one by one with all of our different mods. Do you remember us installing Wildcat? Wildcat is a combat that has lots of features and one of the features you want to disable every time is the time block. You want to go ahead and disable time block. I'm gonna get a mod on the next episode where you can save all of your MCM menus, but you want to disable that. Why do you want to disable that? You want to disable that because MCO, aka Modern Combat Overhaul, has already a time block system, so you don't want both of those two modes. Ultimate Combat, we've done this on the first episode, always literally remove everything. Remove everything that Ultimate Combat does. The only thing you want from Ultimate Combat is the swing effect. That's the only reason we're using Ultimate Combat. Anything else, you completely disable that. That's a small tutorial again with our all of our MCM menus, how to pretty much run them. For Smooth Cam, something you want to do, you want to go to Presets. And do you remember the preset we've installed? Go to the slot 6, click Enter, and now we have the preset working. The lighting will get fixed later on once we install looks. The reason why you see all those different DMBs looking so nice is because people are having or showing you the complete playthroughs they have. And here is our game with 477, I think, mods. You can see here, we run around on 59 FPS. Sometimes if you look to specific areas, you go down to 55, but usually all the time, it's around 55 all the time. So we've also installed complex grass, which as you can see here, it goes with the, our uh, grass mode of our choice. And they actually move every time you walk. If you want to save some of the frames you have here and there, you can go and disable grass collisions completely. This is going to save you some FPS if you really care about that. But I think one or two FPS is completely worth it for having the ability to step on grass and do this. Have in mind, most of the people play Skyrim on 30 FPS. And one of the reasons, again, why I don't want to install that many... Not really graphic mods, but city mods here and there, is because... Right now, I'm having 55 FPS and it keeps going up and down. If I have installed GK Skyrim and GK's Riverhood, that will not be the case. I will have at least 15 FPS less. So, I love what you can go to anywhere you want in Skyrim, anywhere you want, any city. I'm gonna show you how Whiterun looks as well. And you won't have any issues like that. Let me show you how GK looks, for instance. Let's go to my most favorite uh, trader in Riverhood. That also encounters uh, wife issues. And this is what ZK does. Do you see? The whole thing looks slightly different. We have HDT banners. If you get any issues or something looking weird, it's because it's on my part. I'm not having a very good pit rate. My monitors are not very good when it comes to recording. Uh, but as you can see here, we are literally the most busiest spot in White Run. And we're having 59 with 55. I will say 55 FPS on average, just to be fair. You will never have 60 FPS. You can see the 33% less trees, and they look absolutely beautiful as well. If I can play for an hour or two, I won't have any crashes. The game is absolutely fine. We're going to fix those, by the way. Do you see those textures? I'm going to fix those on maybe an episode or two from now. There is a whole bunch of models to fix all of those uh, weird... 
Did you see that? We had to pay 500 gold just to end it because our speed is very low. We are now in Whiterun. On my previous mod list, I was not recording back then. In Whiterun, I was, I was running GK Whiterun and Dawn of Skyrim and I was having 25 FPS right here on this exact spot and look at this, this is smooth, this is great you can literally stop modding the game and just play like this it's going to be great uh, let's check uh, War Maidens my favorite blacksmith in Skyrim he's very chill dude and let's see how different look at his door it looks very chill and looks very nice too look at how the doors and the textures look like you don't need city overhauls, you just need small mods or add-ons in cities to make them look better. You don't need GK Skyrim or Dono Skyrim or anything like that to make cities feel better. If you enhance every small detail, the city itself on the final product is going to look so much better. Let's go to Arcadia's. I wanted to say something before, but I... Look at that! This is so nice! Oh yeah, I remember what I've said. Hello there. Skyrim is a game where you explore interiors. 80% of your time you will be exploring interiors, so you want to put all of your mods and your time into interior overhauls and changing those. The smallest part of your time you will be exploring the world, going to different cities, going outside. What I'm trying to say is that the majority of your time in Skyrim will be you exploring. Like here I've seen some... was it like an issue? No it's not, it's my bitrate causing that. Uh, look at the water, it looks absolutely beautiful, water for EMB, absolutely amazing. You don't want to destroy your game, your FPS, your stability, everything just to make the out world like you see look better. Yeah, it looks very crappy here with the load zones. We will do something for that. If you want to enjoy Skyrim, and again, I am running not the best gaming system, I'm having a 370 Nvidia graphics card. Look at how the Dragon Ridge looks, it's absolutely amazing and once we install the lighting mods, it is going to look even better. Uh, there is also a ferry all the way back that can also travel you to White Run, and we will fix most of those patches later for now. What I wanted to show you, you go to Skyrim Set Engine, key bind that to something of your choice, let's go with page up for me, and once you click that, it's gonna show you a page for anything you want. Let's say you want to, dra to add a Dragon Soul, or add a perk point. So let's go ahead and add the Ebony Armor. The game doesn't look uh, half as bad, it doesn't have to look like those full 4K mods, uh, mod lists where you see so many big trees everywhere, everything moving around, next gen, which I can see why people like those, but I love it when the game looks very simplistic, it plays out very well, and it feels like a completely new game. And it does feel like a completely new game. Let's go for the Ebony Spell Knight armor, I love this armor set as well. And let's go ahead and start running around and exploring. But as you can see here, here you see the lighting. We're going to fix that uh, later on. As I always keep saying, it's going to look even better with our looks mods. But the game looks very good, it runs even better. And that's what I was I wanted to pretty much call it. Thank you for watching guys. We managed to get close to 500 mods. Next episode, I'm going to do a beautification project for Skyrim when it comes to character creation and things like that. If you want to support the channel, you can always leave a like, comment, subscribe. Modlist is getting closer and closer every day. That being said, thank you again for watching guys. Have a beautiful weekend and take care. It was me, Kavu, and I will see you next time. Peace.